I've made a lot of videos on this channel about hacking Android apps using Frida, and I get comments all the time asking me how to bypass some sort of protection or telling me that whatever Frida script that I used in a certain video didn't work for their app. And I wish I could just give you a cookie cutter solution for every app that you might work with, but unfortunately it just doesn't work like that. In a lot of cases, those generic Frida scripts that you can find online just won't work with the app that you're working with, and you might have to do some sort of reverse engineering or come up with your own custom Frida script in order to bypass whatever you're trying to do. So in this video, I'm going to show you an example of how you can use JetX to inspect the source code of the application and then use that source code in order to build your own custom Frida script. And once again, I'm going to be using the Android Goat app, which I've used several times on this channel as my example. And this time I'm actually going to be using the emulator detection check as my example that I'm going to be trying to bypass. There are probably several different ways you can go about bypassing this check. There may even be a generic script you can find on the free code share that would do it for you. I just thought that this would be a nice simple example I could use to show how you can come up with a custom free script all on your own. And before I get started, just for awareness, this device that I'm using is an Android Studio emulator and it is rooted and it also has the Frida server installed on it. If you want to know how to set any of that stuff up, I have videos on my channel to show you how to set up an Android Studio emulator, how to root that emulator, and how to set up Frida on it. But all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. First, just to make sure we understand what we're doing here, we have this check that has a button that says check emulator. If I click on it, down at the bottom, it says this is emulator. Our goal is to trick it so it doesn't realize that it's in an emulator and then it says it's not an emulator. The first thing I want to do is open up the APK with JetX and see if I can figure out where that source code that is doing that check is and see if I can understand how it works. And just as a bit of a shortcut, I'm just going to search for the text field emulator and see what comes up from that just so I can kind of jump to wherever that code is. And we see right here is an emulator detection activity. That's probably what we're looking for. So I'm just going to double click on that. And now if we scroll down to on create right here, we see that text that says that this is emulator, which we saw when we clicked that button. And we want to get that to where it prints out this is not emulator instead. And if we look into that a little bit further, we see that there's an if statement and it's evaluating this activity and then is emulator. And if that returns true, then it says this is emulator. And if it returns false, this is not emulator. So now let's take a look at this is emulator and see what that's doing. So it looks like this is building a fingerprint of the device and looking at all like the specs and everything from the emulator. And then it's searching through that string that it builds from the fingerprint. And it's looking for some keywords like emulator and VBox and Jenny Motion, which is another third party Android emulator. So it's basically just looking through all that information from the fingerprint of the device. And it's trying to find those keywords that would tip off that it might be an emulator. But honestly, we don't even really have to care what is going on inside is emulator. All we really need to know is that it's evaluating is emulator. And if it's true, then it returns this is emulator. And if it's false, it's returning this is not emulator. So we want to use Frida to kind of catch that response and change it to whatever we want it to be. And fortunately, JetX actually has a pretty cool little ability that is built in that allows us to do this pretty easily. If we just right click on is emulator, there's actually an option in that menu that says copy as Frida snippet. So if we click on that and then we can go to our favorite text editor or IDE or whatever you want to use. For example, I'm going to use them and I'm just going to create a file called is underscore emulator dot JS. And then I'm going to paste that snippet that we just copied from JetX. We do have to add just a little bit to this script to make it work. All we had to do was add that java.perform at the top and then close it with the curly bracket, the close parentheses, and the semicolon at the bottom. You don't really need to know all the details of why that is necessary, but it basically has to do with the Java virtual machine that allows the script to interact with the mobile app and the functions and variables and everything involved with that. But now that our code is done, let's save our script and try to run it with Frida and see what happens. First, I need to make sure that the Frida server is running on the device so I can actually communicate with it using Frida. And now just to verify that Frida is working and also so I can get the package name of my application, I'm going to run this smoke test with Frida-PS-U lowercase ia. And now we see the first one listed there is that Android goat and the package name is owasp.sat.agoat. Now we're going to run this script with Frida-U-F, that package name, dash L, and then the name of our script. And when I run that, it's going to relaunch the application on the phone. And now if I go to our emulator detection and click on check emulator, 
it still says this is the emulator, but we can see in the logs here, it says emulator is called, and then it says the result equals true. And if we look at our script one more time, we see that right here is that log where it says emulator detection activity is emulator is called. And we saw that when we ran the script. And then it says let result equals this is emulator. And the next log message says result equals whatever that result is, which we also saw when we ran our script. And then it returns this result. Well, it seems that pretty much all of this hinges on whatever value they store in this result variable. So let's edit our script. And instead of saying let result equals this is emulator, instead, I'm just going to say let result equals false because we want this result to be false because we want the app to think that we are not an emulator. So once again, if I save that script and I run that script again, once again, it relaunches the application. And again, I click on emulator detection and click on the check emulator button. This is not emulator. And we see in the logs here that is emulator is called is emulator result equals false. So once again, this was a very simple example. This was just a test sample application. And in the real world, you would have to probably do a lot more reverse engineering to figure out exactly what you need to change in your script and maybe obfuscate it and have all kinds of other things involved that you would have to parse through. But I just wanted to use this little example to show how you can use whatever source code you're looking through in JetX to pretty easily take that source code from JetX and translate that into a custom free script that you can then run and interact with an app. But anyway, I hope that was helpful. Maybe if you do run into some issue where something from the free to code share isn't working, you might be able to use this to come up with your own custom solution. But that's gonna be it for this video. I hope I'll see you in the next one.